Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Aoife Keen. I'm the Customer Marketing Specialist here at Visible Thread. This is part three of the final installment of the Bid No Bid webinar series that we've been running for the past two days. If you um, have been with us for the last two sessions, welcome back. We're delighted to have you here for part three. If this is your first session, um, fear not. The previous two sessions with Tom Wilson and Fred Velchek are already available on demand. Um, so you can watch those now and you'll be able to see the links for those on the webinar console. For today's session, I'm joined by uh, VP of Customer Success, Kyle Peterson. Kyle will delve deep into how VT Docs can revolutionize your bid no bid decision making process using real world use cases. As with all of these bid no bid webinar sessions, this session is also being recorded. So both the slides and the webinar recordings will be emailed out after the webinar. Now, throughout the webinar, please do feel free to ask us any questions in the ask question box and do engage with us in the attendee chat. We will get back to any questions at the end. On the console, you will see the related free content tab um, where we have put together any upcoming events and resources that we believe you will get value from. So feel free to click those links throughout the session. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Kyle. We have some poll questions um, to kick it all off and you'll be able to click on the slides in the console itself um, to submit your answers. So take it away, Kyle. Awesome, thanks Aoife. Welcome everyone. Glad to have you here. Know your time is valuable. We're gonna make this as uh, value add as possible. So for those who have been on webinars with me before, we do like to just kind of get initial feedback, get the audience thinking, engaging. Um, this question, how would you describe your internal bid, no bid culture at your organization? You can click right there on the screen. You can click A, you can click B, you can click C. I'm curious to see where the group's at. Um, you know, bid, no bid, it's very contextual, it's very personal, it's very cultural. Um, you know, are you in an organization where, man, we just throw everything at the wall and see what sticks? There's nothing worse than seeing is not kind of participating or competing. Um, there can be pros and cons to that approach. Um, you know, B, this is thoughtful, measured, you know, each opportunity is reviewed and vetted. We're focusing on, you know, win probability, profit, risk, delivery. It's not just enough to win. Can we execute against it? Um, and then, you know, C is another kind of angle of attack as well. You know, we spend more time DQing opportunities. There's a, you know, there's a competitive and financial impact to going after proposals or opportunities rather that maybe you're not best placed to win. There's also a morale impact on that bid and proposal team. So. Thank you for those who have submitted responses. Um, I think we'll kind of take a look at the answers here. See where we're at. Okay, good stuff. We see, you know, strong review, vetting, all that good stuff. Happy to see that. Um, you know, feel free to use the chat, you know, fire off questions, all that good stuff. Um, but it looks like we have pretty healthy approaches to this. Um, so I'm assuming then, you know, the focus is gonna be, can we do it faster, better? as opposed to, gosh, we just need to kind of retrofit the way we approach this entirely. Um, two more questions. So that note, for those who are reviewing, who are vetting, um, what are you looking for? What do we, what kind of do we use to qualify or disqualify an opportunity? Are we looking at the solution itself? Can we do it? Have we done it in the past? Are we looking at staffing, resources, the people doing the work, both generating the bid the response, and then also doing any work that would result from a win. Are we thinking about risk elements, compliance elements, you know, security, classifications, clearances, NAICS codes, export, size standards, um, anything like that, um, more maybe structural limitations. And I, I would imagine some of you are probably thinking, Kyle, we do all the above. Um, maybe next time we'll add that answer. But if you had to pick one, what do you think is maybe most important? How about that? It's kind of an interesting one. And, you know, once again, if you think we're missing an answer or a variable, feel free to drop that into the chat. All right, let's see. Laura, you can, I'll, I'll note you down as all the above, but if you had to pick one, but I hear you. We'll, it's not, it's not a black and white, we only look at this. Um, let's see, let's see where the group's at. 
really looking at that solutioning front. That makes perfect sense. Can we done it? Have we done it before? We're thinking about the win. Good. And we are looking at some of those risk elements, compliance elements. That's important too. Last one. Have we used the discovery feature of VT Docs before? That's a feature of VT Docs that's very powerful for this use case. I think it's underutilized if I could be so bold. So I want to see the group. Have we used it? And what the heck is discovery, Kyle? You're probably going to be a no. Cool. Okay, good stuff. Let's see where the group's at. That's what I was expecting. Um, and so coming out of today, you're going to get a crash course in discovery. Don't worry. Next time we host this webinar, I want to see that ratio flipped. Yes and no. I'm a terrible liar. Is this the last question, Aoife? <laughs> um, I think this is it, but I, I'm having fun. Hopefully you are too, but don't worry. I'll give as much as I take. I promise. Um, this is once again, kind of getting into visible threat as well. You know, to what extent when you're looking at an RFP, an RFI, a SOW, a PWS, um, you know, to what extent are you flagging certain sections, certain keywords, certain requirements to functional areas? You know, generally, it's not just one person that's reviewing an RFP that's responding. Generally, there is a committee. Um, we, you know, these are cross-functional endeavors. Um, are we kind of saying, hey, program management, I need you to look over here. Hey, engineering, hey, supply chain, I need you focused over here. Um, I would imagine most people are doing that. I'm curious on kind of a frequency basis, how often are we doing it? And if I could be so bold, I would argue that maybe if we're doing it less often than we'd like, it's probably a time constraint, a resource constraint. But we'll get into that. We'll talk about it. Cool. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, so I'm seeing often, sometimes. I'd be surprised if I saw some never. Um, and I'm wondering, I'm thinking that VT Docs could help you move those sometimes into oftens, maybe even always. Cool. OK, so Kyle. Thank you for teeing us up. Thank you all for your feedback and participation so far. It makes these actionable, helps me see kind of where the group's at. Um, so going to keep this pretty simple. It's going to be powerful, but simple in my approach. How are we going to use Visible Thread to help you know, make these decisions? Um, so I'm going to focus on just two features, dictionary searching and discovery. That's why we were asking about discovery earlier. So these slides will be shared. The recording will be shared. Um, as I go into it, guys, I'm about to share my screen. Please do use that Q&A box. I'll get through as many questions as I can at the end. Use that chat box. We want to hear from you. Um, I find the Q&A more fun than the presentation. I have a blast presenting. So um, that kind of says it all. Let's dive in. So I'm going to share my screen. And so we should now be seeing VT Docs. And we're going to dive right in. So for those who have never kind of seen Visible Thread before, very quickly, it's a document analysis platform. I'm uploading RFPs. I'm uploading SOWs, PWSs, past proposals, responses, past performance evidence. The possibilities are endless as long as it's PDFs or Word documents, we're uploading them to Visible Thread, we're organizing them in folders, and now I can look at these documents as a group. So we're going to dive right in with kind of a customized dictionary, a bid, no bid dictionary, if you will. Um, I realize organizations look at a lot of different factors. It's not all one size fits all. That's where these custom dictionaries are really powerful. Kyle, what the heck is a dictionary? A dictionary is a collection of search terms that I'm telling Visible Thread, you know, look for NAICS, look for HubZone, look for WOSB. And I'm grouping these search terms into these higher level categories or buckets. So in this example, my risky terms are, you know, OCONUS, outside continental United States, overtime. Service Contract Act obligations. So when I'm looking at RFPs, I'm I want to find the 
these search terms quickly. I don't want to look one document at a time. I don't want to look one idea at a time. Can I search across all of these PWSs, SALs, RFPs, what have you, all at once? And then we can even get into those solutions, those capabilities we were talking about. You know, so my cloud solutions, I'm looking for things like architecture, cloud, agile, pipeline, mobile applications, data management and analytics. I'm looking for these search terms. This is all customizable to reflect your own context, your own business, your own objectives. But the point is, I'm now scanning all of these documents at once and visible thread is showing me, hey, Kyle, Oconus appears 19 times across these documents. Zero times here, zero times here, one time here, eight times here. But Kyle, cool, who cares? Visible Thread is going to show you kind of right within the source doc itself how that search term is appearing and where. Cool. And that's only looking at one search term. What if I grab them all? And this is where this color coding is going to come into play as well. So what I want the group to kind of understand here is I'm going to show you two different ways to export this information. So let me be clear too. We want people reading RFPs. We want you reading through SALs, PWSs. This doesn't replace the human's need to understand the opportunity, to understand your existing relationship or knowledge of the customer. But we want to be able to pinpoint and highlight these key terms within multiple documents at once in one fell swoop. So I'm going to shred all of these documents at once. You've got the ability as a user to choose, you know, one-offs. I'm going to do all of them. I'm applying that dictionary against it. This is just customizing your Excel output. But let's click export. And in just a moment here, I'm going to receive one Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So we're leaving visible thread. And this is a deliverable I can share, I can email, I can save it. And you get one tab kind of per document. So here's my first PWS word for word, but we're gonna start to highlight our search terms right within the text where they appear. And then we're also lining it up over here against that category. So data belongs to my data management and analytics category. So I get an X right there. Now we're starting to see the green come into play. Infrastructure is a green term. So we see the search term itself as green to help clarify and make this a little easier on the eyes. So there we're seeing infrastructure again, we're seeing compliance and you get the entire document, but we can also quickly jump down and filter. Hey, cybersecurity team, I need you guys focused on these paragraphs here. can find hangups, we can find snags, quicker, faster, easier. Here's another PWS. There we see once again our green term showing in DevOps and cloud solutions. Good. So on and so forth. Hopefully we're starting to kind of pick up what I'm putting down here. There we see some red terms, OCONUS work, Service Contract Act obligations. I want that flag as red to differentiate it from other search terms. So we can customize this totally, but it's a great way to call out certain items, uh, whether they reflect capabilities, whether they reflect, uh, reflect risk items, whether they reflect functional ownership. This is totally customizable. So really, really powerful. What are you looking for? What are you searching for? What keeps you up at night when we're looking at opportunities? Whether we know we're gonna bid it or not, I want to find these items. So you can shred all those documents at once. Let me show you kind of two other ideas. I'm going to pause here on the dictionary concept. We can also, you know what, maybe Kyle, that's a lot of information. I want more bite sized. Just show me the risk elements. Cool. I'll select my risk terms and we can export just these snippets, just the paragraphs of the documents where those risk terms appear. So we're telling you, hey, and this CIO PWS, there's service contract, or excuse me, OCONUS is appearing here. 
I'm just going to wrap that. There we go. As you move down, we're seeing, you know, on page eight of this HCATS RFP, we're once again mentioning OCONUS. Bite-sized chunks of information. And within my dictionary itself, I'm also including term descriptions. Why should I care about OCONUS? What does that mean? I remember when I first entered the industry, I didn't know what OCONUS meant. I felt like an idiot in a, <laughs> in a meeting. Um, you can define certain words. You can also drive action. Okay, Service Contract Act is highlighted, flagged. What the heck do I need to do with it? You can drop in kind of corporate guidance policy. In this case, this is hypothetical. You know, you can make it your own. All Service Contract Act requirements must be reviewed and approved by legal HR and pricing. There's wage, cost, and compliance items to consider. Cool. But we don't want to have to pick out snippets of documents one at a time, paste them, email them, search for them, use that dictionary. What if I wanted to say, hey, DevOps team, across these, what is that, eight documents? I'm just going to show you paragraphs where terms like cloud, infrastructure, all that good stuff appears. So we still need to grapple and understand this language, but we're getting it in bite-sized chunks that's shareable. We can bring this to gate reviews. We can bring this to go, no-go sessions, bid, no-bid sessions. And we can use dictionaries to do that. And they're totally customizable, like I said. So I'm going to just kind of take a quick pause. We're going to pivot into, hey, Kyle, cool dictionary. There's stuff I'm always looking for. What about instances where I'm not quite so sure? I'm not always looking for OCONUS and overtime. Maybe I want to look at opportunities and how they line up to my existing documentation. That's where discovery comes in. So in general, and that's the key word here, when I'm working with users, you know, I'm looking at or I'm seeing use cases surrounding Kyle. When I'm looking at, you know, vetting opportunities, I'm looking for have we done similar work in the past and have we written to this in the past? We can use discovery to do both to say, you know what, let's line up an RFP against kind of past performance evidence. In this case, this RFP here. We're going to pretend this is what I'm thinking of pursuing, or maybe I am. I have decided I'm going to pursue it. I want to see how it lines up against, in this case, one, two, three, four PWSs that I've delivered against in the past. You can have multiple documents in here. I'm going with four. You could have 20 documents in here if you want to. But the point is, Visible Thread is going to line up these documents side by side, and now I can start to get a quick visual using discovery, this is AI, this is natural language processing, no dictionary required. I don't need to tell Visible Thread to look for service, look for security, or look for NASA. Visible Thread sees it at a high level, but we'll also, you know, wait, there's more. We'll show you every variation of the idea. So, you know, support we're seeing here, cloud migration support is an option in my my RFP that I have never spoken to in the past. Once again, cloud migration support, my customer is asking for it. In this example, I'm not seeing any evidence in my SOWs where I've spoken to that. That might be a gap. That might lower our P-Win. Maybe we need to team. Maybe we need to subcontract. But this view is hard to achieve with the naked eye, you know, security. Here we see alignment. My customer here is mentioning system security plan nine times. I mentioned system security plan in these past SALs as well. There's alignment there. There's alignment when it comes to security tools. And this is the yin and yang of this analysis. But when we look at system security plan architecture, once again, my customer's mentioning it. I'm not. So I'm looking for gaps. Where is my customer mentioning something? And I don't see any evidence in my own documentation. I'm also looking for alignment. Good. Hit. 
hit, hit. So this multi-doc analysis is really key, and you don't need a dictionary to do this. We can also do a directed search. You know, these automatic, automatically identified themes are great, but there's generally things you guys are looking for. You can also say, hey, visible thread, where do, does my customer speak to cloud? And then where do I speak to cloud? And we can see cloud-based services, good, hit, cloud computing services, cloud services, so on and so forth. That's really broad. You can be more specific. Let's go with cloud services. Oops, helps if you spell it right. This is a more narrow view. You can be specific or vague in these searches, depending on how wide of an aperture, wide of a lens you want to cast. So this heat map is really helpful. And, you know, maybe one more thought exercise and I will kind of get into my next folder, my next example. Let's imagine that this example was flipped. This was a NASA effort. So NASA was appearing in my in this RFP. Maybe I've never delivered to NASA before. These gaps can be powerful, whether we see big, clear ones or if we have to go into the detail just a touch. You know, reports. What have we delivered against in the past? All that good stuff. Employment reports gaps, receiving reports gaps. Cool. So I'm going to jump into a new folder, but I'm still in discovery. Discovery is done at the folder level. It's the same lens. It's the same mechanics, slightly different idea. In this case, this RFP is one that I'm thinking of pursuing. Have I written to similar requirements in the past? And in this case, I've uploaded three hypothetical past proposals. Once again, you can have more. I just dropped three in, but we're lining them up to the left of the RFP. Do I want to beg, borrow, and steal and repurpose content? It's a good sign, once again, of can we bump up our P win? Can we reduce the workload on our B and P, you know, our proposal managers, our writers? Possibly, but let's use discovery to do that as opposed to, oh, I think we've spoken to it in this proposal, let's take a look. Once again, we see alignment and misses. You know, proposal A doesn't look like it's a radio proposal, but clearly this RFP, they want a radio, gosh darn it, but we've got good kind of hits there in B and C, good. Let's expand it, you know, radio's broad. Radio network, alignment against proposal B. Mobile radio, alignment. Portable radio, alignment. And right off the bat, boy, it's looking like proposal B. There's good alignment there. We've written to similar requirements. And as I'm selecting them, I didn't really touch on this too heavily in the last example. I will now. Visible thread is calling out and tracking where those selected themes are appearing in the source document. Once again, less scrolling, less control finding, less highlighting, less copy and pasting. We can look at you know radio. We can look at solutions once again. That's a bit broad, uh, you know, not a ton of alignment there. Equipment, you know, equipment shelter, that's an interesting gap. Equipment shelters, once again, that's one where I might need to write from scratch. Maybe I need to find other proposals. But this kind of idea level view is very key. All right, we don't speak to it. So, we can use this high level heat map to show alignment, to show relevance. Uh, uh, maybe one more thing to think about, and I'm actually going to take a quick pause and a quick breather. I work with user groups that not only do this to, of course, vet you know, RFPs. Maybe this is one we want to pursue, maybe not. People also, actually, let me go back to my dictionary search example. Go to this folder. I'm going to jump back into my dictionary search. I've also seen it done, because I work with some people that say, Kyle, we know exactly what we're going to bid on. We don't need help. Hey, this opportunity is perfect for me, but you still need to win it. You still need to deliver against it. And people can use these views, these heat maps, to kind of help resource efforts, whether once again, it's on the B and P, the bid and proposal side, or the delivery side. We can see right off the bat, this grouping of opportunities, not a ton of hits. 
hits when it comes to artificial intelligence and machine learning. A lot of hits on data management and analytics. A lot of hits on cybersecurity. It's also just a great way to resource. Do I need to hire more? Do I need to team more? What's it going to take? And once again, we can look at this at an individual document level too. No OCONUS work in this PWS because there were no hits in my risk category. Cool. Good to know. But it's also good to know that there's OCONUS requirements here, 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 and here. Not here. Cool. So I'm going to take a quick breather, take a sip of water, uh, and I'm going to monitor the, um, the chat here briefly. Okay, let's do this. Let's talk about dictionaries a little bit more. Oh, and actually, I, I forgot one step. That's why I booked this for an hour. Aoife knows me too well. Let's go back to discovery. You know, once again, cool heat map, Kyle. What can we do with that output in the right and let's use that equipment shelter as one of our examples. Gap, gap. I can now see exactly where in the RFP my customer is referring to an idea that I haven't written to in the past. Gap, gap, so on and so forth. Equipment cabinet. I'm learning a lot about this RFP without even opening it, but still open it. So in this case, I've just grabbed these ideas. You can drop in a bunch of different ideas. For the sake of time, I'm just saying, hey, these are ideas that appear in my RFP. They don't appear in my past proposals. We can take this view here and we can export it. We can export content. Show me the snippets, only displayed rows. Only show me the paragraphs, that big bad RFP where these ideas appear that I haven't spoken to in the past. Imagine sharing this with your programs team, your delivery team, with your BD team. Imagine bringing this to a go, no go session. Hey, this is a potential gap we need to keep in mind that might impact our P win if we can't show evidence of delivering this in the past, potentially. But I don't want to just flick over an RFP that's highlighted or has comment bubbles. Why don't we just share the paragraphs where those ideas appear? Cool. Let's flip it on its head. Those were gaps. Let's say, you know what? Show me those paragraphs where we've written to similar requirements in the past. Radio network, mobile radio portable radio, alignment, alignment, alignment. Let's do a quick search. You can once again, type to search, type to search, type to search. Man, you know, I know, is this anything to do with the police? Oh, interesting. So Capitol Police, got it, got it. All right. So clearly my end user is the police in this RFP good and it looks like you know proposal c mentions the capital please good we'll grab that um and we'll grab you know what we're gonna grab all of our police examples i think that's important that's our end user cool but basically you know show me where my customer is speaking to these ideas show me where i'm speaking to them and i want the snippets i don't want four docs hundreds of pages export content boom So here, we're seeing once again, tab one is the RFP. I selected every single instance of police. And so you're gonna see the paragraphs and sections where police appears. And this is a great example too. I didn't even need to search for rural right here. I'm gonna color it red for dramatic effect. But because I selected police, visible thread picked it up. 
I'm learning something about this deliverable, this RFP, my end users, rural police, it's not the NYPD. And then, you know, proposal A, we're not going to see really any hits here. Remember? Big gap. That's okay. But that's why your proposal A tab is blank. If we go to proposal B there, we saw a lot of alignment, didn't we? We're seeing all those hits on radio networks, portable radios. Good. We're not really speaking to police here, though, but don't worry. Proposal C mentions where we've delivered it to police in the past. And in this case, the United States Capitol Police. Good. But once again, that's where that rural example is so good. We haven't really written to rural police forces based on this view. Maybe we need to dig up more proposals. Maybe we need to look to partner, for instance. Or maybe we just need to acknowledge that could impact our ability to win. Or we really need to beef, beef up our response and be ready to defend that. Really, really powerful stuff. Cool. This view is hard to achieve otherwise. Um, and it, it's more important than just a control find. Even though you can do use this for a control find. I work with a user. All she does, she'll drop a bunch of RFPs in here and literally just search for performance bond. And if it's over a certain dollar value, so in this case, it didn't appear. Let me just try bond quickly. Okay, so no hits. Um, but, you know, she would look for then. Good, cool, now I know. Um, and if it's over a million dollars, she doesn't bid it, just for the sake of argument. Oh, let's try this folder really fast. So you can control find it, but it's the alignment that's key. No luck again. But hopefully we're getting the point. And we can search for NAICS codes, too. In this case, we're seeing kind of one big document where those are appearing. Cool. No veteran owned. No hits. Maybe we just try veteran. And there we go. Do the dash. Cool. Awesome. So let me just take a quick pause again. I'm going to stop sharing ever so briefly. Um, let's actually get into some questions um, and let me just kind of pause here for right now just as I want to conclude a couple of ideas but you know we'll continue the conversation don't worry there's a lot of factors that we're looking at when you want to pursue bids looking at solutions looking for risky items compliance items that might trip us up that might require teaming that might require some kind of certification I don't want to be searching one document at a time we can use dictionaries Gosh, how does this opportunity that I think I want to go after align with where I've done certain work in the past, where I've written to it in the past? That's where that discovery, that AI, that natural language processing, that alignment is so key. As opposed to having two documents up on two separate screens and kind of going back and forth control finding. There's a lot of horsepower here. Um, and it's customizable to your context. Some people don't care about NACE codes at all. Kyle, what the heck is that? Cool. Let's get into some questions. Um, Emily, uh, do you have any recommendations for how to structure folders in VT Docs for these use cases? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, let me jump into the software again. You know, as always, it depends, but I definitely have a couple of ideas. So when we're thinking about visible thread, you know, the folder is your standard unit of measure. So in this view, you know, I'm seeing these documents side by side because they live in this folder here. So it's a folder level lens. So there's kind of, to make it simple, there's two ideas to think about here. One, if I'm just looking across 10 RFPs and I only have the bandwidth to go after five, I might drop all of them into a folder and do that dictionary search against them, looking for qualifiers, disqualifiers, et cetera. When we're thinking about alignment, you know, I want to look at an RFP against past performance. I want to look at an RFP against you know, past proposals where I've written to it in the past. In that case, I think it can help to have a folder where I have a bunch of, you know, a bunch of SALs and PWSs in it that I've delivered against, and I just need to drop in an RFP against that kind of existing list um, you can do that um, and then once you've decided hey yeah i want to go after this rfp then i've seen people 
you know, then you'll create your own RFP folder. So I'm going to oh gosh, I don't know. Um, I, you know, have Air Force contracting background. So I'm just going to call it Air Force RFP ABC. And then, you know, we can drop our RFP docs right in here. You can also move documents too, just to be clear. Um, you can drag and drop. Doing that a few times for dramatic effect. Or you can right click a document. You can move it up, you can move it down, you can move it to a different folder. You can delete the thing. You can even view it if you want to take a quick peek. So the organization is really up to you. Um, there's a time and a place for kind of, I'll say, living folders, a lot of SALs, a lot of PWSs. Um, and then there's kind of your one-offs, tacticals, my specific pursuit RFP folder. Um, the only thing I would keep in mind, guys, is it needs to be invisible thread for the analysis to happen. So I would be thoughtful about the documents, just like anything else, you know, good data in, good data out. Be thoughtful about what goes in there. I would recommend, usually I'd say 20 to 30 docs in a folder is fine. Um, it also depends on the length of the document. If you're dealing with, you know, I work with some customers that go after Medicare or Medicaid efforts. Those are 1,000 page RFPs and 1,000 page responses. You, you might not want 20 of th those documents in a folder. You might kind of get the spinning wheel. So just kind of think about it that way. Um, good, good question. Let's see. Um, Karam, yeah, good question here. So question is, how can we ensure that, you know, the bid, no bid process um, is on track? We want to make sure that we're accomplishing those objectives, I'd imagine, on time. So it, it's a good question. I don't think that's a process that Visible Thread can solve, like with a silver bullet. I think we can absolutely contribute to it. Here's what I mean by that. Generally, when I work with users, bid and proposal teams, BD teams, proposal managers, there's generally not enough of them. They generally have multiple opportunities going at once, so time is of the essence. And they, you know, if we can get them started earlier, if we can get them into the tech sooner, if we can get to kickoff sooner, if we can spot tricky requirements, tricky solutions, gaps that we might need to plug earlier, using discovery, using dictionaries, I think we can really help keep that process on track as opposed to, oh man, I've got this, you know, 100 page RFP that I'm skimming through, I'm looking, I'm control finding, I'm kind of balanced against my other objectives. We get two weeks down the garden path and oh shoot, you know, we just came across this OCONUS requirement, for instance. You know, let visible threads faster starting point get you off and running faster to keep you on track. Um, that would be my kind of my first recommendation. And then the other thing I like to keep in mind is when I was mentioning earlier those dictionaries, let me share my screen again. You can use dictionaries very cleverly. We don't work in a vacuum. We want to make sure the team is on track. Hey, data management, I need you to look at, you know, these paragraphs tee them up. You need to go to page 99. You need to go to page 115, which are right here, by the way, which we can export, which we saw earlier. They don't have to go to the document at all. This is the document verbatim. So teeing up our various functional groups, our reviewers, our delivery teams using dictionaries is also very powerful too. You know, we remember that category shred that I did earlier. Filtering down to certain sections. I think we can help there. Who needs to know what, when, where, why? Um, and let me just once again refresh the group. What the heck does this look like? You know, this is my PWS. This is one of seven that I shredded all at once. And there are those dictionary categories. Once again, we can filter. Hey, infrastructure team, go here. Or there are no hits there. So let's see, no hits there. Actually, this document didn't have a lot of hits, did it? Let's, it didn't, um, based on what I selected. But, you know, we can drill down and filter very quickly. Um, one thing, hey, Kyle, cool. What does that dictionary look like? How do I make one? 
our 6.0 product update makes creating dictionaries very straightforward, very easy. We have a range of categories with terms that sit below them. Categories are just buckets. These are kind of solution type categories. You can have functional categories. Let's do it. I'm going to create a new category. Let's call this program management just for kicks. I've worked with a lot of terribly talented PMs in the past. You know, we're looking for words like scope. We're looking for words like schedule, change orders, so on. It's, you know, reporting, CDRs, seed roles, meetings, right? Status meetings, status. How quick that is. You can have a program management category. I'm a recovering contracts man. Contracts manager. You can have a contracts category. What are they looking for? You know, damages. Um, termination. Let's use that wildcard feature. You know, show me anything beginning with terminate. I don't need to put in termination, terminated, terminates. We can do that game on. And then we can get into those color coding. If we saw the color coding earlier, I like yellow, so my contracts terms will be yellow. Program management. They're going to be a regal purple, for instance. Very, very straightforward. We can talk about these wild cards more in a moment. Let me stop sharing and get back to some questions. Good. Keep them coming, guys. Uh, Dave, um, the folder structure, does it replace or add to our current folder structure and is there a pipeline display of past present and future proposals um, good question so visible thread does not replace any existing i'll say kind of internal file share structure sharepoint confluence google drive um, we want to just pull documents out of there and feed it into vt we don't need to look across every single document in a sharepoint we want to look against specific ones sows pws's past proposals um, we are i will mention though um, this year we are developing a product update where vt docs can look and pull from external structures sharepoints Google Drives, Confluence, you know, show me similar content here. The product can't do that right now. It will be able to do it this year. Um, the thing to keep in mind is for now, we want to upload the docs that we want to review into a folder. And I, that should answer the pipeline um, question as well. You know, you could have a past proposal folder. You could have a, these are my current efforts I'm working on. Um, and then future would likely be those RFPs, maybe. Maybe it's RFIs. Um, and you can actually, one other thing to think about that I'll share quickly that I have shown today, but I maybe didn't call it out with a ton of oomph, is these folders, you can have subfolders here. You know, you don't just need one giant folder. You see, I have a variety of folders and you can sub them further. There's a time and a place where we want further breakout. So within this bid no bid webinar folder, I have three subfolders and you can even sub to a sub like a Russian nesting doll. Maybe I want, you know, an RFP, whatever. Um, you can also structure it accordingly. So you're not just looking at a hundred docs with no organization or structure. That's pretty straightforward. And we can move, we can delete, we can shift all that good stuff. Good, good question. Uh, let's see. What else is? Oh, good question. Um, Juliana, can you copy instead of moving the document? So you can't kind of copy a document from one folder to the next. That's where, once again, the analysis is done at the folder level. You can move a document from folder to folder, or you can up if you need the document in two different folders, you just would simply upload it into folder one, you'd upload it into folder two, and that's because the analysis is done upon upload, and then the analysis sits within that folder. Good. Cool. Good questions, guys. Let me take a quick peek. Sometimes people use the chat as well. It doesn't seem like we have any chat. You can use either one, guys. I'll monitor both the Q&A and the chat box. Um, let me think if I have any other stories I can share. Um, let 
let me show once again. Let's let's revisit these dictionaries. I think that's important. Um, we have a, a minute or two here. So once again, for this example, it's first things first, we want to understand the concept. This is one dictionary. You can have multiple dictionaries. My best user groups do change that dictionary. And I have a crazy amount of dictionaries, so I, I don't expect users, I'm no fun at parties, to have this many. But you can have all kinds of dictionaries. We can see, you know, when were they created? When were they, where are they being used? It's really, really helpful. And there's a time and a place for different dictionaries, for different ideas. It gets into that customization, contextual topic we were mentioning earlier. You know, I have my bid, no bid. It's capability focused. It's delivery focused. But maybe I want to look at, I'm a former contracts manager, let's look at the FAR and the DFARs contained within these documents. If I have any contracts people on the line, solidarity, great to have you. I don't want to control find for specific FAR clauses across all these documents. Just show me where 552.222-26 appears. There. Thank you, Visible Thread. Show me where 244-6 appears. Rad. You can dictate to Visible Thread, I want you to look for these FAR clauses verbatim. You can also use our wildcard feature as well. I have users too. Kyle, I don't want to put in all the FAR clauses that I care about. Just show me the FAR clause. Can I just make one search term? You can. This is visible. You're telling visible thread, search for any numerical sequence that begins with five, two, dot, three dash, or three digits, three pound signs, dash two digits. Boom. I didn't tell visible thread, look for 217-8. Visible thread found it because it follows that pattern. Really, really powerful. I won't bore us with the um, the far any longer. Let's look at maybe one other example that I think might be interesting. Um, you know, this this is kind of a cool wild card in action that I'll show the group. But dictionaries are customizable; they can and should be. They're also very straightforward to put together. You can look for symbols, show me percentages, show me less than, show me greater than. We can look for all kinds of cool stuff like that. You can look for dimensions, you know, wildcard once again, show me a digit, X digit, two by four, four by eight, 11 by 12, I'm no carpenter, we can find it. Show me personal identifying information, show me phone numbers, for instance. I didn't tell Visible Thread to look for that. It found it because it follows that standard numerical sequence. Good. Cool. Um, so very customizable, very easy to put together, very cool. Show me this. And I want to share it with the group. The kind of bid, no bid. It's collaborative. It's multifunctional. And these dictionaries are a great way to honor and reflect that. Who cares about what? What do they need to do with it? And then we get into repeatable process. How can we get started faster? How can we stay on track? It's by running that dictionary against one or more opportunities and then sharing that output with the group. I'm terribly passionate about it, but um, Dave, how have you addressed IT department's fears? Um, and then just shout in the Q&A or the chat if I'm misinterpreting, Dave, but I think I know what you're getting at here is IT teams or Kyle, where is my data living? If we're uploading those documents, maybe there's secure information, confidential, proprietary, dare I say classified information. Where does that live? So with Visible Thread, you have two to three deployment options. You can deploy within our cloud if you have tight security concerns, limitations. I don't recommend that, but that is an option. 
if you do, if you are security conscious, maybe we're doing secure work, see covered unclassified information, maybe classified information, Visible Thread can deploy on premise behind your organization's firewall. We have no connection. There's perfectly segregated. Any documents that go in to your on-premise instance stay in your on-premise instance. So we work with highly secure organizations. They're deployed on-prem. I can't see anything that they're doing, and rightfully so. Excellent. Cool. Um, I think that has kind of taken us through most of the questions. Um, last call, guys. Um, I, I love this part. Uh, take advantage of me being here. Um, but let me just say this. Like I said, bid no bid's tricky. There's a lot. It's not just a boom, visible thread's going to tell you bid this one. There's a lot of different variables we want to bring to bear. We bring in a lot of people. There's always a time and a place for gut, feel, human connection, human relationships. But let dictionaries, let discovery do some of that tedious document alignment, document search. Um, let us help pinpoint those areas that you use to say, yep, this is a sure thing. We want to go do it. We can do it to also then flag, hey, this might give us pause. This might drive cost. This might impact our ability to win. Let discovery flag those things, dictionaries, earlier. Bring that analysis. Bring that data. Bring those outputs to those reviews. Drop them into SharePoint. Say, share, them, share them with your partners. I work with groups that use visible threat outputs and email them off to their partners or their JVs, their joint venture uh, partners. So anyways, I could talk about it all day. I'm terribly passionate about it. I'm hoping that you found this session helpful. Um, I think I'll end it there. Aoife, back over to you. Did I miss anything? No, I think you've covered everything there, Kyle. It's fantastic to just get so many different examples of how you, you, you can use Visible Thread to help a bit and a bit. So that's brilliant. What I'll do just before we finish up is highlight some uh, great resources that we have. Um, one of them being our fantastic customer success team. So if you didn't already know, um, we have a dedicated customer success team here who are there to help you at all stages of your customer life cycle. So um, if it's a case that you have some questions and want to get some quick wins, do certainly reach out. They're there to help. Um, what else do we have? We have another fantastic resource, which is VT University. Um, this has courses um, that can be completed at your own ease. And um, the content there is super valuable for getting to know the product. Um, and it's a free online learning platform. Um, so definitely make use of that. And just to let you know about upcoming events, um, if you enjoyed today's webinar, the next webinar we will be hosting is how AI is rewriting the rules of content creation. And that will be held by um, Michal McGrath, VP of Marketing at Visible Thread. Um, so in that webinar, we'll delve into the practical examples of showcasing how generative AI can significantly enhance content creation processes. And just a final reminder then that the slides and the recordings for this session and the past two sessions from the Bid No Bid webinar series will be available after this event. And as always, thank you for attending um, and participating in today's webinar. We look forward to seeing you at the next one. Thank Thanks you. All.